My name is Jeffrey Chamberlain. I'm a geneticist and I work at the University of Washington in Seattle. So the idea behind gene replacement therapies is to develop a synthetic or a more of a normal version of the dystrophin gene and find a way to deliver it back into the muscles to replace the defective dystrophin gene. So the idea is that we're trying to go at the initial cause, the fundamental cause of the disease, which is a defective gene, by simply replacing that gene with a new copy of it, and it should uh, if you can deliver it to the right muscle cells and if it works properly, then it should make the missing protein and you have then uh, treated the cause of the disease rather than trying to treat some of the symptoms. So the idea is to make this synthetic uh, gene, put it into a small delivery vehicle, inject it right into the bloodstream, and then it just all by itself uh, leaks out of the bloodstream and goes to the muscles and starts making the missing protein. Uh, the other thing we don't know is how long this therapy will last for. Our study so far suggests that it's a fairly long-lasting treatment, uh, but it is something that might need to be replaced uh, in 10 or 15 years. Uh, uh, by, uh, by replace, I mean to do a repeat administration. But, you know, with sort of good news, bad news there in a way, with most conventional medicines, you know, you might have to take a treatment every day or every week or things like that. With the gene therapy treatments, we think uh, one single treatment will last 10 or 15 years, uh, but it probably won't last a lifetime. Well, I'm, I'm not sure there's a single name for the entire process, but the, the, the miniaturized gene that we've developed, we call a microdystrophin because it's somewhat smaller than the dystrophin. The delivery vehicle is referred to as AAV, which is the name of the virus that it was made from. And together, I, I guess we usually just refer to it as a systemic uh, vector gene delivery system. Uh, and we feel that the gene replacement technologies will fix the muscles that are there, but an older patient that's lost a lot of muscles will probably only make a partial recovery. So that's why I say it's a little short of a cure. So in the last two years, we've teamed up with a new uh, biotechnology startup company called Solid GT, and Solid is now taking the methods that we've developed in the animals and are hoping to do a human clinical trial uh, very soon. The timing is a little hard to predict because it depends a lot on regulatory approval and you know, getting uh, everything in place and, and, and showing the safety, uh, but a lot of that has been done and Solid GT I know is hoping to apply to begin the human trial very soon and if everything goes well, the first patients will be treated in the next year. It is, it's extremely exciting. Uh, you know, I'm still a little nervous because you never really know how something is going to work until you get into the clinical trials. But we've had a lot of ups and downs over the years. We had a number of very significant obstacles that had to be overcome. Uh, so it's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, many people in my laboratory over the years have worked on this. Uh, but we're now at the point where we have something that we think is going to be effective and we're very excited to uh, put it to the test and, and see how it works in the real world setting of uh, clinical trials.